فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم دل الله سيد أنا صببنا الماء صبا أنا صببنا الماء صبا and how we pour down water but the way we pour this water as Allah says is it's, it's in what it's in large quantity but ya ikhwa the water doesn't come down like it's not pouring it's sprinkles Allah the rain if he was to send it down as though it's something that's been poured onto you then it would kill you that same rain if it goes beyond the duration that is needed from it, it can turn from a blessing to a what? A punishment. Like what happened to what? The people of Nuh. 40 days Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them with rain. That same rain can turn from blessing to a what? A punishment. But Allah is saying, I sent that rain on you and I made it a form of blessing for you. Anna sababna al ma'a this is Allah now mentioning what He's done for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through this water and this rain that He has sent down onto you and sent down is what brings about the crops and the grains and the vegetations and the fruits that you are benefiting from. It comes from this rain. Africa, countries like that, when rain doesn't come down, they suffer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they need that water for their vegetation. They need that water for their crops and their grains and etc. The land becomes the land becomes barren. Who's sending that water without being paid, without no money being given to him, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anna sababna al ma'a. The word anna sababna, there's two qira'a or two recitations of it. One is Anna, which is the one I read. And also Inna. If it becomes Inna and it's read like that, then it becomes Isti'naf. It becomes a Isti'naf, which is that it's an independent sentence. But if we read it as Anna Sababna al Ma'a, then grammatically it becomes Badal and it becomes the type of Badal which is Badal Shumul. And Badal, of course, is that it's taking the place of something that was previously mentioned. What was it that was previously mentioned? فَلْيَنْظُرِ insan. So the Anna here is a Badal Shumul of the word فَلْيَنْظُرِ insan grammatically. That's a side point for those who understand grammar. Anna صَبَبْنَا الْمَاءَ we, Allah is saying, look and ponder and observe how we pour down water onto you. Through this water that we have sent to you, from high above, it is that water that brings about what? The vegetations. In another ayah, Allah says, Alam tara, have you not seen anna Allah anzala min as Have you not seen? Here, when the Quran says, have you not seen, meaning haven't you really taken it in? Have you not really observed, pondered over anna Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anzala min as that He sent down from high above? Ma and water, فَتُصْبِحُ الْأَرْضُ مُخْبَرَّةً And through that water, the earth becomes green. The earth that you couldn't look at because of the way it looked. It didn't look appealing. Because of the rain that has now come down, your eyes will enjoy looking at the greenery in front of you. And then the vegetation that come out of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who done it. ثُمَّ شَقَقَنَّ الْأَرْضَ شَقَعَ then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, then we broke open the earth, splitting it with sprouts. This br breaking of the earth is that vegetation is coming out. When the earth is bringing out vegetation, the earth is not stuck together. It's slightly splitting. So the vegetation can come out from it, sprout out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, ثُمَّ شَقَقَنَّ الْأَرْضَ شَقَعَ We have broken open the earth, splitting it. Not that earthquake happens, or not that the earth splits into two halves, or no, it just so slightly moves apart, so the vegetation and the grains and everything can come out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that rain, He sent it down with that, and then here you see the greenery, the fruits, the vegetations 
are coming out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions that. Here now I'm going to go back to a question of what, which I asked you. Allah is moving from speaking about us and how we started. And says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? مِن نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَ ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَ ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَكْبَرَ ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَ Then after that he moves on to what? He moves on to فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنْسَانُ إِلَى طَعَامِ أَنَّا صَبَبْنَا الْمَاءَ صَبَّا ثُمَّ شَقَقْنَا الْأَرْضَ شَقَّا فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّا وَعِنَبًا وَقَضْبًا وَزَيْتُونَ وَنَخْلًا Why? What's the relationship between that? The relationship between it is the sperm drop through it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He brought what? He brought a child. The human came through this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a person come out from this. The same way is that the rain that came from high above, it is the cause through Allah's permission for the what? The, the vegetation and the greenery to come from the earth. The second thing is, the easy way that the child comes out of the womb of his mother is the same way, that we bring through that rain, the water, when it goes onto the earth, the splitting of this earth, and this, uh, the vegetation sprouting out of the earth is the same way and the easy way that the child's coming out of the womb of his mother. Also, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? فَقَدَّرَهُ That Allah placed the food to go, uh, for us to go through stages and levels. The same is with the vegetation. Because he says after that, فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّا The حَبَّر here is what? The grains and caused to grow within it grains, and then grapes, and then a herb, uh, herbage comes out from it, and olives, and then palm trees. This is the gradual stage in which it goes through. Allah says, فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا And we cause to grow from this earth grain, and grapes, and herbage, and olives, and palm trees. وَزَيْتُونًا وَنَخْلًا That's the stages it goes through. Just like the stages which you go through. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the relationship between the verse and what it was talking about previously. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَحَدَائِقَ غُلْبَى And then gardens of dense density. The garden, the rain that came down, that brought, that produced through it the grains, and then through it came grapes, and then came the palm tree. All of that, it became so much that the garden became full. That's why the Mufassirin, they said, وَحَدَائِقَ And gardens of غُلْبَ What does the word غُلْبَ mean? Abu Ja'far ibn Jarir al-Tabari, he brought six views, and all of them, they can be reconciled between it. What did he, the first one he said is, the word غُلْبَ, it means Anything that comes together. And of course, when the garden has so many trees, the trees they come together and they cross through each other. This view, the first one is attributed to the view of Ibn Abbas. The second one is that the word غُلْبًا means طيبة. The garden is blessed and great. طيب uh, means pure and good. This is a, a view attributed to Mujahid. The third one is, the third one is, نَبْتُ الشَّجَرِ كُلُّ All of it is trees. They're not even grass only. They're trees. They've actually become big. This is also attributed to Ibn Abbas as well. And also, Ikrima mentioned trees which have big shades. Four. الطوال Long trees, also attributed to Ibn Abbas. Five, al-Nakhlu al-Kiram, good palm trees. Not any mere palm tree, but a good palm tree. And six, Iram, great, and big, great. So this fifth one was attributed to Qatada, and last one is attributed to Ibn Zayd, rahimahullah. So Allah brings that rain from high above, and then it brings these gardens of dense density, and that, that's large. وَفَاكِهَةً 
and Allah brings from it fruit and grass. Wafakihatan means fruits. Wa'abban means grass. This ayah, wafakihatan wa'abba, the Mufassirin, the scholars of Tafsir, they said that the fakiha is fruit or it's what comes from the earth that we eat. And what is it that we eat that comes from the earth? Fruits and vegetations. That's it. And they said, وَأَبَّنْ is anything that comes from the earth that the animals eat. And what is it that the animals eat? They eat the grass. They eat grass. There is the asal or the original usage of the word al-ab in the lugha. Dalun al awdi. It means anything that goes back to something, returns back, back to something. The Arabs would say, it is something that goes and it comes back again. Like for example, the Arabs they say, Abba ila watanihi. He went back to his country. This ayah, there's a statement that was attributed from Siddiq al Ummah. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was asked about what does wafakihatan wa abba, what does the word abban mean? Somebody asked Ibn Abbas. Oh, sorry, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, what does the word Abban mean? And then Abu Bakr said, Ayu samai tubulluni. Which sky is going to uh, shade me? Wa ayu ardin tukulluni. And which earth will allow me to walk on it and keep me underneath it? In qultu fi kitab illahi ma la a'lam. If I say about Allah's book that which I have no knowledge of. Some scholars they weakened it. The statement of Abu Bakr, they said it's weak in qita'i sanadi because the chain of narration is disconnected. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he recited this ayah one time. He recited wa fakihatan wa abba. And Abu Bakr, uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, we know what fakiha means. We know what fruit means. He says, فَمَا الْأَبُّ What does the word ab mean? And then he said to himself, Umar said to himself, لَعَمْرُكَ يَبْنَ الْخَطَّابِ By Allah, O oh, Ibn al-Khattab, إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ التَّكَلُّفِ This is you overburdening yourself in what you have no knowledge of. Stop it. Stop talking about it. You have no knowledge of it. Stop speaking about it. Some statements like that was attributed from Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he didn't know what the word ab means. And the reason why he didn't know what ab means or the possibility that the Mufassirin mentioned why Umar may not have known it is because and was unaware of it is because the word ab is not lugha to Quraysh. It's not the dialect of the Quraysh. Quraysh. It's not the dialect that the Quraysh speak. But that shows you what wara'u salaf the how fearful the salaf were when it came to the Qur'an. They didn't know what an ayah meant, and they didn't know what it meant, they wouldn't, they wouldn't speak about it. And they, they did not find it a problem to say, I don't know it. Because they knew if they spoke about a verse they had no knowledge of, that they don't know where they're going to go the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ وَلِأَنْعَامِكُمْ All of that which Allah mentioned, the grapes, the palm trees, the garden, all of that we made it. For what? مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ وَلِأَنْعَامِكُمْ As an enjoyment for you and your grazing livestock. This is for you and it's also for your livestock. It's for your goats, your camels, your lambs, your sheep. It's for your livestock. لكم ولأنعامكم. And for your cattle, for them to come and to eat from this greenery. And then for you to then eat from what? From you to eat that goat. All of that, we made it for you. So you can benefit from it. But the benefiting of it is من الزمان, for a period of time. And then this will come to an end. It will not last forever. That blessing that you're being given is going to come to an end. Is going to come to an end. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, but when there comes the deafening blast, and when there comes the deafening blast, meaning makes you deaf, the deafening blast, the Mufassirin, they differed amongst themselves what is meant by a sakha. They differed. And they held different opinions. One view they said that the word as is an ismun, a name, min asma'i yawm al qiyamah. It's a name from the names of the Day of Judgment. The, the Day of Judgment has many names. Taghabun, Qiyama, Akhira. as is from its names. That's one view. The second view is that it is the blowing of the trumpet and the effect that it will have on the people's ear that it will be deafening, you will not be hearing anything else. The excessive loud noise that comes from that blowing. When the angel blows into that trumpet and the noise that comes from it is going to deafen the people's ears. And they won't be able to hear any other person who's around them if they're saying something or if they're making noise. That's another view held by the scholars. And all of those views, they, they, those two views, they come together. Because if it's the day of judgment, then this tr- blowing of the trumpet is what? It's the day of judgment here, happening. It's the happening of that day of judgment. And Ibn Abbas is the one who mentioned النصاخة من أسماء يوم القيامة. Ibn Abbas mentioned that the sakha is from the names of the day of judgment. And that is the correct opinion. Ya ikhwa, that day, the day when the trumpet is going to be blown, b- uh, blown and the uh, noise is made, that day, what does Allah say? Allah says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ On that day, a man will flee from his brother and his mother and his father. That day, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي When the trumpet is blown, everybody will run away from their beloved ones. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي You're going to run away from your own brother, your blood brother. That day you will run away from him. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And his mother and his father. The person is going to run away from them. وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ And you're going, the wife and his, and his children, your own wife, that day you're going to turn a blind eye, you're going to run away from her. You're going to run away from your own children that day. The question here is, why is the person going to run that day? Why are they going to flee? The scholars, they mention, asbab, things, why that the person will run away that day and why he would flee. The first one is, as the next verse to come mentions, which is, لِكُلِّ شَأْنُ On that day, for everyone is, a matter that's sufficient for him. An adequate matter has been placed in front of him. It's enough. What has been put in front of him is more than enough. He can't take on anything else. He has no place, he has no time, he has no energy to be talking to anyone else. His own affairs are too much. Every individual and every man that day will be a matter that's sufficient for him. The second, uh, and of course, our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, in the famous hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Aisha, يحشر الناس يوم القيامة that the people will be resurrected the day of judgment and they will be, be gathered in front of Allah the day of judgment. حفاتا عراتا غرلا the people will be brought in front of Allah that day naked. The people that day will be naked. And they will be what? Uncircumcised. And they will be shoeless. No one's wearing anything. So Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, 
او مسنج اوف الله النساء والرجال جميعا ينظر بعضهم الى بعض men and women they go to look at each other that the men are there naked and the women are there naked they're going to look at each other Aisha has the haya and the shyness a Muslim woman should have of having wanting to cover herself. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Aisha is asking this question because she has shyness in her. She knows the value of hijab and covering yourself up. And you all know the famous narration that Aisha, she lived in the house that the Prophet died. You all know that, right? Prophets are not moved from where they die. As the Prophet said, when Prophets die, they are buried where they die. So the Prophet died in the house of Aisha and he was buried there. And then guess who got buried after that? Her father, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, got buried next to the Prophet. And then when Umar became sick, when Umar became sick, he requested from Aisha if he could be buried next to his two friends that he's always loved. That he was always with if he can be buried next to them and Aisha this was when Umar was on his on his deathbed he sent his own son Abdullah ibn Umar he said go to our mother Aisha and ask her if she would allow me to be buried next to the Prophet and my, my friend Abu Bakr and Aisha sent a message back and she said I was preparing that spot for myself I wanted it for who I wanted it for myself. But now that you've asked me, I will give you that spot. I will give you that spot. Umar then said to his son Abdullah, when I die and I pass away, there might be a possibility she might have changed her mind. That she may not feel comfortable and she only did it to respect me. Ask her again. And if she says no, then bury me somewhere else. So when he died, he asked Aisha and she said of course I am not one to change her statement and she and Umar got buried in her house next to who? Abu Bakr and the Prophet Aisha when Umar got brought into the house and he got buried she started to wear hijab she never used to wear hijab before that now that Umar's body has been brought into the house and has been buried in her house Aisha would never walk in the house without a hijab. Umar, is he alive or is he dead? Why is she doing this? Shyness. Haya. Shyness. Our sisters are now suffering from the concept of somebody who's looking at you, alive, seeing your aura, and you're taking your hijab off. So when Aisha is asking this question and she's saying to the Prophet, An nisa wa rijal. The men and the women, they're going to look at each other. She's asking it from that belief, that fitrah, the way. Because our mother Aisha, when she would do tawaf around the Kaaba, what did the Prophet say? That the women wear niqab and qufazain, gloves. Women are not allowed to wear niqab and they're not allowed to wear gloves when they are in the Kaaba doing tawaf. Are they? No, they're not. The Prophet prohibited them from it. But Aisha said, Men on their riding beasts, which would go right in front of us. And one of us will take our jilbabs from the side and we would cover our faces. Uh, we would cover our faces, making, making sure no one sees us. Because what the Prophet prohibited was what? The niqab is what he prohibited. He did not prohibit them to cover their face. He prohibited them specifically the niqab. That they're not allowed to put something over their face. Or place a niqab over their face. But if they use the edge of their cloth. Or they place a hijab. And the, uh, uh, the jilbab. And they cover their face. Then there's nothing wrong. It doesn't fall under the prohibition. That all shows you what? That all shows you. How these women were. How they were in terms of their covering. When the ayah came down. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ وَبَنَاتِكَ وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِيبِهِنَّ ذَلِكَ أَدْنَى أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَ فَلَا يُؤْدَيْنَ When this ayah came down, I, uh, the narration mentions that the women of Medina, the whole city of Medina turned out what? 
pitch black. The women covered. The ayah came down and the whole city took it on board. No one said, why us and not the women? No one questioned Allah's ahkam. No one questioned Allah's legislation. Submission at its pinnacle. Allah commanded us. We're his slaves. He's our master. He told us to cover. We'll cover. There's a powerful statement Ibn Al-Qayyim mentioned. Allah brought you out of the womb of your mothers the way he wanted you to come out. With his, with his want and his will and his irada, you came out. Don't come out of the houses without his want and his will. You come out of your own houses the way he wants you to come out. And the way he will, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the woman and the men. So the women, they covered fully in the mid-city of Medina. Made sure that they covered. Wallahi, it's dim-wittedness that you take a place in the hellfire for a cloth that you can just cover yourself with. You have chosen a place for the hellfire. For what? أعمار أمتي ما بين ستين وسبعين وقليل من يجوز ذلك The span of this ummah is only between 60 to 70 and little go over it. You know, maybe you might not reach 50 or 60 or 70. For that short period of time, don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially knowing that this time awaits you. So Aisha said, النِسَاء rijal, Men and women, they are naked. That day, aren't they going to look at each other? The Prophet looked at Aisha. He said, Ya Aisha, O oh Aisha, الْأَمْرُ أَشَدُّ مِنْ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ The matter is great for them to look at each other. For a person that day to be looking at a woman's aura, what's on their mind that day is so great that they won't even be thinking about that. وَلِذَلِكَ سَلَفُ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ The pious predecessors. When you read their biography sometimes, when you read that, Biography, you sometimes see that the fear of Allah, taqwa and khashya, some of them it used to prevent them from seeing things that were around them. Are you with me, brothers? It was narrated from some of the salaf that he, a person came and visited his house. And they said to him, you live in a house and your roof has collapsed. And he said, wallahi, I lived in this house for this period of time. And I never raised my head up to check the roof. I've lived in this place for this period of time, but I never raised my head up to check my roof and how it, if it collapsed or not. I don't know what it was like. In other words, the, 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 how much they protected their tongues and their limbs, they also protected what they looked at. If what they looked at had no benefit, they never looked. Huh? What did the poet say? This is how much they were taking matters serious. And these things, brothers and sisters, that we're reading, it should be something that we, we visualize now. That's why they used to see it. They used to try to live like that now, now. That their fear of Allah is to that extent, and to that level. Hassan al-Basri would take a... Uh, Burial, or he would dig a hole in his own house. In his own house, he will bury, uh, he will dig a hole, and he will lie inside it. And he will then say inside the grave, "Qala Rabbi rijiuni, la ali a'malu salihan fi ma tarakt." Oh Allah, take me back to the earth, so I can come with righteous actions. He he goes quiet for a little bit, then he cleans the dust of himself. And then he says to himself, Oh Hassan, you have been given a second chance. Benefit from it if you're telling the truth. If you're telling the truth, benefit from it. And that's what the poet said, يُمَثِّلُ ذُ اللُّبِّ فِي لُبِّهِ مَصَائِبَ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْزِلَا فَإِنْ نَزَلَتْ بَغْتَةً لَمْ تَرُعُ لِمَا كَانَ فِي نَفْسِهِ مَثَّلًا وَذُ الْجَهْلِ يَا مَنْ أَيَّامَهُ وَيَنْسَى مَسَارِعَ مَنْ قَدْ خَلَى فَإِنْ دَهِمَتْهُ صُرُوفُ الزَّمَانِ بِبَعْضِ مَصَائِبِهِ أَعْلَى What does it mean? يُمَثِّلُ ذُ اللُّبِّ فِي لُبِّهِ He compares himself to that day that's really going to come. He actually compares it to his situation. فَإِنْ نَزَلَتْ بَغْتَةً So if that time comes suddenly to him, 
لم تروعه it doesn't shake him لما كان في نفسه مثلا because he used to compare himself to this long time ago he used to he rehearsed this so many times but the matter is problematic for who the one who's not unaware, who's unaware of this all this is happening he doesn't know what's going to take place and what's going to happen wallahi you see a drug dealer i remember a brother who went to prison he went to prison for one of the biggest crimes he murdered a person he was he did rape big crimes the only person who was still visiting him in, in the uh, prison was who? his mom your mom does not let go of you you can be the biggest criminal if you want to your mom's still going to come to you but this day your mom's running away from you why what do you think she justifies it for her son she said wallahi my son is, didn't do that wallahi my son is not a rapist wallahi he's not a criminal they they're lying about him the mother would find qil qil for his son but this day your mom would not want to see you she does not want to come into contact with you she doesn't want to see a father does not want to see his wife and his children leave me alone the second reason why the person will run away is يَفِرُّ كُلُّ مْرِئِ مِنْهُمْ حَتَّى لَا يَرَوْنَهُ وَيَرَوْنَ مَا يَحِلُّ بِهِمْ He doesn't want people to see his reality. That day your reality is known. يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِقِ You don't want your wife to really know and your children and your parents that you were a real wrongdoer. You were a criminal. You don't want to be exposed. So the reason why you're running away from the people and the children and the, everybody's running away from everyone is because People don't want their reality to be found. That's what's going to happen. Your reality, what's inside is being brought out. That day everything's going to be brought to the table. There's no such a thing as hidden. Everything is out in the open. So people run away from one another. The third reason why is that the people don't ask you for their rights. The rights that you've taken, the people you've insulted, the people you've backbited and spoken against, tweeted about, commented and said things about them, that day they're not going to let you go. Why would they let you go? Why would they let you go when they can get righteous deeds? They're in the most need today. Are they going to let you go? Allahi, they're not. That day, it's not dinar wala dirham. It's not dinar, nor is it dirham. Wallahi, it is hasalat. It is righteous deeds. And he's going to stand until he gets every single right from you. Give it, give it, give it. Once he realizes that he's taken all of your righteous deeds and there's still more left, he will still not leave you. He'll say, Ya Rabb, I have sins. Why don't you give him my sins? If his hasalat has finished, and his righteous deeds has finished. But I have sins. Take my sins and put it on him. Then his sin, your sins will be taken and it will be placed on that person. Or their sins will be taken and placed on you if you're the one who was wronging others. And today, think about it. How many people say things, forums, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and speak about people's honor and a'rab? Huh? Speak about people's honor and people's reputation and lie about them. Attribute to them what they don't believe or don't say. Ascribe to them what they are free from. That they don't believe that. The day of judgment. Where would you go, Imam Allah Ta'ala? And now one of the saddest things is that, and this is from the deceptions of shaitan. What is it from? It's the deceptions of shaitan. That gossiping, name calling, ridiculing, belittling others. For you has become that you're defending the deen. To believe that backbiting others, name calling others, things that are from the kabair, from the major sins, that shaitan has duped you so much that you believe really that this is what? That this is protecting the deen? What you always have to remember brothers is just because you've changed the name of something and you've given it a good name, whether you call it Jarrah Ta'deel, or whether you call it Nasiha, or whether you call it Nusrat al deen victory to the religion, whatever nice names you want to give it, whatever nice names you choose to give it, it does not change the reality of what it is. 
Just like calling riba interest does not change it still being riba. Calling drugs food doesn't make it food. Calling alcohol juice doesn't make it juice. Good names can be used for everything, but doesn't change the reality. And this is none other than a tactic that was, a, that was deployed by who? Shaytan. He referred to the tree which Allah told Adam not to eat from. He referred to it as what? Shajaratul khuldi. The tree of eternity. If you eat from this tree, you're going to live forever. Shajaratul khuldi wa mulki la yabla. And your kingdom, Adam, is never going to perish. This is what this tree is called. It's called Shajaratul khuldi. And this shajara is what? It's the shajara, it's the tree that's going to take Adam out of Jannah. He gave it a good name. And that's what people do. They take a good term from the Quran and the Sunnah. And they would use it for their filthy actions. And then they think that because they've given it a good name, that the reality will change. No, it won't. The reality is the reality, it won't change. Yawma that day, يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَلِي I will conclude there inshaAllah ta'ala Subhanakallahumma bihamdik Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk